okay about organizing myself? Sure. First of all, they're, they're, they use most of their uh, transporting or uh, ways of transporting themselves with public transportation. Here in America, we can all agree that with a higher GDP and a higher economy, we can have more, um, well, there's 10, there, ten there's um, 10,000, I mean, tens of thousands of people, especially young adults, teenagers, that have cars. I myself have a car, other people have cars around my age group. Now I myself am 18. Now, I'm going to give a quote for, from the fact sheets, age 21 minimum people drinking age, from the centers, Center of Disease Control and Prevention. A median 16% decline in motor, motor vehicles crashes among underage youth in the United States that increased the, lingo, the legal drinking age to 21 years, basically saying that that if you lower the drinking age, I mean, if you stay the drinking age of 21, there will be, there has been a decline <coughs> in motorized vehicle crashes. So that just totally defies what he was saying. And also another statistic from the lowering the, le the legal drinking age, an analysis in the pros and cons, Speak Up Prevention Coalition is the source. When the drinking age was lowered in the 1980s, there was a steep rise in the level of teen drinking and driving fatalities. Now, that is being that is basically saying that the, ling the legal drinking age is 18, then there will be more fatalities and there will be more uh, crashes. And we don't want crashes. We don't, we don't want people to be dying, obviously. And another study indicates that when the drinking age is at 21, those younger than 21 drink less and continue to drink less throughout their early 20s, and that youth who do not drink until they're 21 tend to drink less as adults. This is coming from minimum drinking age laws, effects on American Youth Institute of for Social Research. Now, <clears throat> uh, if I recall, hold on, just save my notes. Unsafe drinking, binge. Now, he did, he did state the point that there are, that people are more likely to binge drink, but if you lower the, like, let's say, let, let me give you a scenario. Um, I'm going to say it myself. Um, I'm going to get some of the drink. I'm going to go for someone who's older than me, such as older than 21, in this case, since we're in the United States. And um, I'm getting my source of alcohol from someone who's 21. Now, if we lower the drinking age to 18, guess who's going to be having more accessibility? People who are having more accessibility would be younger kids, such as middle school kids. Now, if we have middle school kids drinking alcohol, that would just look bad upon us in our society, and it would just be total chaos and unhealthy for the, people, the little kids to be drinking alcohol anyway. So I have I have some statistics to back that down. So it says, binge drinking peaks from 21 to 25 year olds, yes, at 45.9%, while the binge drinking rates those aged 12 to 13, 14 to 15, 16 to 17, and 18 to 20 are 1.5%, 7.8%, 19.4%, and 35%, 35.7%. That is basically saying that throughout the the kid is throughout a like a children's age, once they keep growing, they're more likely to drink or binge drink. And if you are lowering the drinking age to 18, then they will have more accessibility. I'm talking about the little kids. I will have more accessibility because they will be going to the people who are 18 to get their drinks and alcohol from. Now, I also have another st another statistic, which. Eight-year-olds are typically entering any phase of independence from their parents through college and workforce and are more susceptible to binge drink, risky sexual activity, and other irresponsible behaviors due to lack of maturity. Now, we don't want to have 18-year-olds being all, you know, drinking out in public. And since they're going through all this, you know, new um, 
they're not mature enough, is basically what I'm saying. And this is coming from effects of minimum drinking age laws. Review and analysis from the literature from 1960 to 2000, and it's from the Journal of Studies on Alcohol. Now, uh, just back to, to my points. Um, if we lower the drinking age to 18, basically, um, other countries that do have the age of 18 as their legal drinking age have other forms of trans transportation. As Americans, we tend to be more, um, we have our own cars, we tend to drive on the freeway, and once you're 18, you can get your license. So, um, also, that he made, a, he made the point about binge drinking. Um, if, when you do binge drink at the age of 21, you, well, I mean, there are going to be binge drinkers, and there's always going to be uh, more binge drinkers. And if you lower it to the, to the to, uh, 18, then there will be more binge drinkers in a lower age group, and we do not want that. Uh, I have another quote that I just got received right now. The younger a person <laughs> begins using alcohol, the greater the chance of developing alcohol dependence or abuse sometime in their life. Of those who begin drinking at age 18, 16.6% 6 subsequently are classified with alcohol dependence and 7.8% with alcohol abuse. If a person waits until the age 21 before taking the first drink, these risks decrease by over 60%. This comes from age of onset of alcohol use in association with DSM, yeah, I'm not gonna say that, alcohol abuse independence results from the national longitudinal, longitudinal alcohol epidemiological, epide, epidemiologic study, Journal of Substance Abuse, that was a long title. So basically our, we're saying that we should not lower the drinking age and it should stay the same as the one because it's safer for um, younger uh, kids and teens. Thanks.